Hello everyone. Today, we're going to discuss how to change the current window displayed on the HMI using a macro or based on a value within the PLC. To get started, let's open an instance of Easy Builder Pro. Now within the project on my display, I have several windows that you can see within our window tree. Typically, navigation can and should be performed by the operator using function keys or combo buttons. But in some cases, it is necessary to change the window automatically based on some logical condition. Within Easy Builder Pro, we use macros to define logic. Before we can change a window using a macro, we'll need to create a PLC control object. This object can be found within the center of the object tab. After selecting PLC control, I'll click new in the bottom left corner to create a new PLC control object. Within the following window, I'll ensure that the selected device is my local HMI and that the attribute type is set to change window. There are a few properties that we can define near the center, such as window offset or animation. However, for this demonstration, we can leave the default settings. To change the current window using this object, we can set the number of the desired window into our trigger address. And I'd like to note that this object also has a write back address, and the new window number is written into the write back address. When using this object, please ensure that the next consecutive register after the trigger address is available and can be used as the write back address. Once finished, let's click OK to close our PLC control object. Now, let's select the Project tab and create a new macro. To create a macro, I'll click Macro and select New within the following menu. Within our macro workspace, I'll define some basic logic. I'm going to declare a short integer by typing short, and I'll name my variable Window. Let's initialize Window to 12. I'll also create a boolean variable called eStop. I'll initialize the variable to false, but we'll pull data for eStop from our PLC. To get data from our PLC, I'll select the get slash set function button on the bottom left. Within the category dropdown list, I'll select PLC and we'll leave the function name dropdown list set to get data. Down below, I'll select my eStop variable and we'll retrieve data for eStop from our Modbus device. When finished, click OK. Now I'll select the get slash set function button once more, and again I'll select PLC within the category dropdown list. However, this time, I'll select set data. Down below, I'll select the window variable and set this data into the trigger address of our PLC control object. I'm going to move the set data command down several lines, and I'll wrap this within an if statement. Let's say if eStop, then we'll perform our set data, meaning that our window will change when eStop is true, and we'll end our if statement by typing end if. To finish, I'll check periodical execution and set the execution time to 0.5 seconds. With that finished, I'll save and compile and then run an online simulation. With my simulation running, I'll set the Modbus address used for our eStop variable to true, which will change the current base window to 12. Now what if we want to change the current base window using a word register within the PLC? Well this is quite simple. All we need to do is modify the PLC control object that we just created to read data from the PLC. It's important to remember that the PLC control object will change the current window number based on the value within the trigger address. Meaning that if we want to display window 12, as in this example, the trigger address should have a value of 12. If you are using a tag-based PLC, 
Like a compact logics, please note that the desired trigger address must be part of an array that contains at least two elements. The selected element will act as the trigger address, and the following element will act as the write back address. If you attempt to use a tag that does not meet this requirement, it will not be accessible within the PLC control object. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our channel to check out the latest technical tutorials. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.